What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So I've been kind of thinking that we need to look at making ourselves a base. And I've been flying around looking at the different areas around and what I wanted to do and things like that. And honestly, right here where we've been setting up, I think is what we're going to end up uh, keeping as our main base. I think this is right around where we spawn to begin with. And yeah, I think this is going to be kind of nice. Um, what we're going to end up doing, well, I have envisioned anyway, is we're going to be pushing back the land here, keeping the lake, and kind of like building our base around this place. If you guys checked out my Infinity Evolved Expert series that I did a couple years ago, it's going to be something similar to that. Um, but I was trying to figure out what the block style was that we were going to use. And the only material that we have that isn't cobblestone that we have plenty of is quartz. So I just went to the nether and I was mining some quartz. And I realized very quickly that this stuff takes up a lot of space and we don't have a lot of room. And what if I were to die and, you know, <laughs> all my stuff goes into lava, things like that. Uh, I really would like to get myself an ender pouch. So I can store things that are kind of expensive or a pain in the butt to make. In case we die, we have access to this. We don't have to go hunt for a grave or, you know, whatever. Right? So an ender pouch is a little expensive in this mod pack. It does require some artite ingots, which is fine. Uh, it does require wither dust, which means we have to go kill ourselves wither skeletons. Not a big deal, but it is something that we have to do. Also, it requires blaze powder, which I think we were getting from the cinder pearls in the desert area, but we could also kill blaze for that. And then, of course, this hardened leather, which we've already seen before because we needed that for the hang glider, right? Uh, so there's a few things that we're going to do here. We need to go to the nether uh, to go get the stuff for the ender pouch. Um, also, like I was saying, the uh, quartz takes up a lot of space. Like, I can turn it into blocks or whatever, but... There's items in this mod pack called a Dink Knoll. Um, the Dink Knoll will hold a, a bunch of different types of items up to a certain amount and then deletes all the ones after that. I'm actually not sure if you can put the same item in multiple slots, if it'll fill up all those slots or how that works. But I do know like if you upgrade from one tier to the next tier to the next tier, it progressively holds more and more in each slot all the way up to the Mark 6, which I think holds like... I, I want to say it's two billion per item, but I don't think it's that much. It might be. Anyway, um, I would like to start making the dank knolls so we can start when we do mining or whatever. We don't have to worry about inventory. We can put cobble and gravel and, you know, ardite and andesite and all that stuff in here. I think that would make a lot of sense. So to make the very first dank knoll, we need five of these redstone panels. And in order to do that, we need blocks of coal around a red stained glass pane. It does have to be dyed and then redstone itself. So I'm not sure if we have the coal requirement right now. It looks like we might actually. And then what is the next one? Do all these require coal? Okay, so we're going to have to do a lot of coal farming for this. But we could get the uh, redstone one down maybe. Let's see. We need... Is it five times four, so 20 blocks? We need that many. So that's not gonna leave us with very much coal at all remaining, but coal isn't that big of a deal for us to go find and mine and do all that stuff, especially now that we have uh, Fortune 3. So we have the coal requirement here, and then we needed redstone, so we're gonna need just as much redstone, which is fine, we have that not a big deal. And, of course, we need the red stained glass pane. So we need eight pieces of glass smelted. We have five. Let's smelt down three more. Get that out of here. Uh, we need coal already. Uh, let's do these, the little coal pieces. Okay. So we got coal smelting down the last of our glass. Now we need red, some kind of red dye. Do we have any of the poppies in here? I'm looking. They're right there. Found one. Okay. So that should be all that we need. Once these pieces of glass are smelted down, we can turn it into the eight stained glass, right? It is eight around one die that does it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like this. Chisel it. It looks like there's another way you can do it through forestry, but that way is just a little too much for us right now. All right, so back over here, we take the glass and we put 
that around the red dye. There's our red stained glass, and then we can turn it into the glass panes. Ah, a lot of work for this. All right, so then we do, oh, we need the uh, redstone itself. And there we go. There's five of those. So now we can turn that into the dank knoll. So the next tier, you can do the same thing, or it looks like you can craft them up directly. Actually, I didn't even realize that. Uh, oh, I should have just done this, huh? Normally with these things, you have to do this recipe. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that there were these other ones. Okay, well, that's fine. We started off with the base tier dink knoll. <laughs> we already made the parts. We might as well finish this up. And we can just craft it up to the next tier, I guess. We're going to lose uh, 16 blocks of emerald, I guess, to do that. But it's not a big deal. Uh, had I realized that, we would have just made the biggest one that we can right now. It's fine. So let's look at the dink knoll. We do a shift right click on there. We get one line of inventory, and then it can hold a bunch of different items. So, for instance, if I take this nether quartz, I can drop that in there. Now, if I take all the nether quartz out of here, does it say select item, nether quartz count, place all but one? It doesn't say what it holds, does it, anywhere on here? Okay, so let's drop these on the ground. I was going to do like a... Um, a shift drop over here, but that's not working for whatever reason. So I'm not sure how much this holds. Oh, am I, is it deleting it? Okay, so this only holds up to 128 and now my magnet picked them all up. <laughs> okay, well, we're just having a bunch of fails here. So the dank knoll is pretty good. Uh, it's obviously something that you wanna upgrade. So that's gonna be the next step. <laughs> Well, to correct my mistake, I am just kind of north of the base here and <laughs> saw that there was a large open stone area and I assumed there was going to be coal on the surface and sure enough, there was. So I'm just here mining a whole bunch of coal, which I think is going to be more than what we need, but might as well grab some extra as well. I'm out here. Uh, but yeah, Fortune 3 plus all these exposed coal is definitely giving us plenty more to make the better dink knoll than what I've made previously. Whoops. All right, guys, so we had a pretty good haul. I got a bunch of appetite and a lot of coal blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we needed some cyan, and I saw that there were swamp flowers from Biomes of Plenty that would give you cyan dye. Uh, so I came over here looking for that, but I'm not seeing it. These are not what we're looking for. Those give you light blue. Uh, yeah, so we are going to make the diamond tier. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and get out of here. <laughs> that was kind of scary. I don't think those guys are really that big of a deal. Famous last words. I don't think those guys are really like a big deal, but <laughs> they definitely startled me. Let's just get out of there. Um, anyway, we're going to be making the diamond one. And the diamond one requires cyan stained glass, right? So in order to do that, we need some kind of cyan. So cyan floral powder will work just fine. We do have to make the pestle and mortar though from Batania. So let's take a look at that. Pestle and mortar, this one here. So that is a bowl plus a plank plus a stick and the bowls are just three planks. Okay, so that's something that's easy enough for us to do. So three planks. So there's four bowls, then we need a stick, and then we need another plank, which we can make out these slabs. Okay, so now we should have everything to make this guy. Like a so, and then we need to take one of these flowers, turn into the petals, and the petals we can turn into the floral powder. Okay, so now we should have everything. I'm gonna put the bowls in here. I'm gonna put the pestle and mortar. Where'd that go? Oh, right, crafting station. I was thinking that was a vanilla table and that would just jump right back into my inventory. All right, and then we'll put the cyan stuff up here. Very good. Uh, glass, we have smelted. <laughs> so let's turn the glass into the cyan glass. There we go, that into the glass panes. And finally, we are going to make five of these. Uh, otherwise, if we were going to make the, uh, the dank knoll here, we would have to get all the way up to the gold tier one, which we might do eventually, I don't know. We're just gonna make this directly and make this guy. 
So there's a Dink Knoll Mark V. And if we want to upgrade that later, we will just make four of the emerald ones. We could have gone over to the village and traded for those emeralds, but honestly, I think that's more than what we need at this point in time. So yeah, the uh, the bottom tier Dink Knoll, not so great, but we can upgrade it. So we now have this Dink Knoll, which has a lot more slots, and each slot holds a lot more items, which I think is going to be a lot better. So again, <laughs> we can take like our quartz here, for instance, and just drop it into here. Can you put it into another slot? You can't. So it's only one item. So this holds a whole bunch of different unique items. Okay. I was thinking you could explicitly put it into each different slot here and then have a lot of different space for one specific item. That doesn't appear to be the way that works. All right. So let's put all of this stuff in here, including that. We have a sapling. Uh, all right. So... We need to go to the nether. Uh, I'm going to collect some more nether quartz while we're there, but we need to fight ourselves some wither skeletons. We need to get ourselves that wither dust. We need to get blaze rods. There's a bunch of stuff we need to get there. And I kind of feel like maybe... Mm, I think we'll be okay. Uh, we have plenty of foods for regeneration. Yeah, I mean, it is possible that we still can die. <laughs> Hopefully we don't. Uh, but yeah, I did visit that nether fortress over here just a little bit ago when I was looking for quartz. Let's see, which way did I go? Yeah, I thought I mined all this quartz over here. Maybe I mined like the lower stuff. But yeah, I ended up going over this, uh, the stronghold over here. Let's head back over that way. See if we can get ourselves some kind of a wither skeleton. There was a bunch of blazes being annoying over here. It doesn't look like there's very many mobs now. I did not explore the fortress at all. There's some regular skeletons. Oh boy. <laughs> we got guy. Okay. So that's easy. Oops, skeletons are infighting. Get them. Get them. This one's gonna shoot me because I'm in this path. I'll stand right behind him. Get them. <laughs> not me. Get him. Okay. We're good. There we go. Uh, so there's a blue fire all the way down here at the end. That can't be good, huh? Actually, I think that's just open to the nether outside. Oh, I hear a wither skeleton, I think. Didn't I? No, that's a uh, magma cube. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we need to just kind of cruise around the stronghold, try and find some blaze, try and find some wither skeletons. So we got a blaze spawner here, which is good. All right, so I got a blazer rod. Yeah, ah, they got me anyway. Dang, guys. <laughs> well, we got ourselves a blazer rod. That's part of the, the thing. Uh, I really need to get looting on my sword. We don't have that yet. Let's see if we can take care of these blaze real quick. Okay, so we should have a few blaze rods now. We have four of them. I think that's more than enough. I don't really want to farm those guys until we get looting. Um, but yeah, we have enough for what we need. Ooh, let's grab some glowstone over here. Okay. Ah, hey guy. You gonna drop me a wither dust? What'd you drop? You did not. That's wither ash. That's not what we're looking for. Okay, well, we're gonna have to keep farming these guys. It probably would be a smart idea, actually, for us to go back and put looting on our sword. So when we do attack these guys, they can have a higher chance of dropping something or more of something. Okay, let's go back to the base. Let's do that. So I went and I put luck on our sword here. We had enough for looting two. We were about 20 lapis shy of looting three. So I decided just to go with looting two. Um, but yeah, we're back in the nether here and I found some chests. This one's got a climbing glove on it, which is already turned on. You can right click it in your inventory, turn it on and off. Uh, infinity bimetal gear, that's good. More bat wings, some copper, and then this lava charm, which I think gives you immunity to lava. I'm not entirely sure if that is the case. I can't stick it anywhere. Uh, we have this ring of mana, which isn't really doing anything. Maybe we'll put it here instead. I, I think that gives you immunity to lava. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's just kind of like a fire resistance. I'm not seeing anything here. I guess we'll find out <laughs> if... A blaze shoots at us if we get caught on fire or not. 
Speaking of, is there one right here? Ooh, there's one back here. Oh yeah, so the climbing glove lets you walk like a spider or act like a spider. <laughs> so yeah, we can kind of just hang up in this corner if we wanted to. So I'm gonna let him shoot me. I'm gonna let that blaze shoot me. Does that set me on fire? It does. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what the lava charm does. Maybe it's just immunity to straight up lava. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, we got nether quartz now. This is the thing we didn't have before, so that's pretty good. A little bit of that action. Uh, we have three blaze rods off that one blaze, which is also pretty good. But I'm not seeing any wither skeletons on the map. Oop, here's another chest. What do we got here? Nuclear craft stuff. Steadfast drone. Uh, simple hungry capacitor dud. So that that rune itself, or I'm sorry, the uh, capacitor is pretty garbage. I'm just going to throw that away. Just get rid of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, the climbing gloves, those are kind of nice. Um, instead of using like the slime sling to get up to higher places, you can just kind of climb up yourself, which can be, uh, it can be annoying, but it also can be pretty good as well. So I guess it just depends on your play style and where you are. I think for the nether, it's really good for most situations though. I'm probably going to turn it off. So heart container not eaten. What does it taste like? I don't know. Let's find out. What does that taste like? Nom, 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 nom. It tastes like an extra heart or two. It gave us two hearts, it looks like. That's kind of cool. Uh, So we get an emerald apple. Unlock blocked villager trades with red X or cure zombie villagers. That's kind of nice. I didn't know that was even a thing. Uh, All right. So now we're at the point where I want to carry more stuff. You don't have room. So I guess we can throw things into the dink knoll for now, even though like we're not gonna be stacking things. It does work as a way to like hold multiple items. This will just throw all this stuff in there for now. And let's break this guy and grab all these items out of here. Awesome. All right, so I'm hearing skeletons. I see some wither skeletons on the mini map, but I don't think we have access to them right now. Uh, maybe we'll poke out here. Do I see them out here? I don't see them. Are we flying? Wait, what? Oh, we have an air charm. Walk on air, sneak to descend. I was like, are we flying? This doesn't seem normal. <laughs> okay, so I don't want that on. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize we got one of those. <laughs> Definitely confused me for a second. Uh, oh man, there are so many of those bats out here. All right, let's get rid of the skeleton. You're done. I was kind of hoping that we'd be able to go outside and find the wither skeletons out here, but I'm not seeing them, so it's probably best to stick in the fortress <laughs> until we find them. Aha. There's one. Oh, stay back. Stay back. Okay, what'd you drop? Not what we're looking for, but I think the wither bone, I think those can turn into the powder. Yeah, two of those turn into wither dust. All right. So there's another one over here. Let's grab this guy. Maybe he'll drop multiple. Maybe our looting will take effect here. What we got? Ah, we got another one. So yes, yeah, so we can get wither dust this way. We also got drop of evil, which is nice. That will allow us to be able to do cursed earth. Okay, so we have pretty much what we need at this point in order to make ourselves an ender pouch, which I really would like to do so I can put our dank knoll <laughs> in it when we go into situations like what we're in right now, or at least just for extra storage. Uh, but yeah, definitely so I don't lose things if I were to die here in the nether. All right, let's get out of here. And I'm out. All right, guys, so it just so happens that there's a compressed enderman underground here, and we need ender pearls in order to continue on. Yeah, there appears to be two endermen underground here. Uh, we're gonna dig down, which is something you should not do in Minecraft, but it's fine. I I know what I'm doing. I, I know what I'm doing. I, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> is this our compressed one? Yeah, okay, so the compressed endermen turn into, like, nine of them, I think. We're just gonna try and kill these guys normally. I don't think the anti-cheese thing is on from Quark. Oop, and he's gone. Let's see what happens if I poke this one. And that one's gone too. 
Are they going to come back here to me? Oh, I think they might. Maybe. Why did they just teleport away? And where are they now? I don't know. Oh my goodness. Uh, Enderman. I can see the compressed one is around by thing. Oh, you know what? Probably because they were exposed to daylight up there. Dang. So I probably just lost out on both of them. Let's see if we can find them. There's one over here still. Maybe I can poke it before it teleports away and it's gone. Get him. Where'd he go? I don't know where he went. Right there. Oh, oh, we did it. Okay. We got two pearls, but we lost the compressed Enderman. No. Well, you know, I guess it's fine. We ended up getting the pearl that we needed. <laughs> well, we got more than the pearl that we needed. Uh, yeah. So where's the base over this way? All right. Well, we got that. So we should be able to make ourselves the ender pouch that we've been questing for this entire time. Let's go get that done. Now I should have all the materials together at this point in order for us to make this thing. I think it was this chest. Yeah, everything's in here. Okay, so now if we come in here, we should be able to do this and that, and there we go. There's our ender pouch. We did it. Quest complete. So now I can put things like our dank knoll in here, our sleeping bag, our mattock, things that we aren't using all the time. Yeah, that, you know, if we were to die, I don't want those to go bye-bye. I want to actually have those. Um, I did go back to the nether just a little bit ago, and I was trying to find some nethermans. But yeah, I was unsuccessful. They're very rare in the nether. I guess they're kind of rare in the overworld as well. But you can find them in the nether. And I was hoping that since it was daytime, I'd be able to do that. I was heading over to the desert area before it turned nighttime here to set up so we could try and kill some nethermen at night or endermen at night. But yeah, we didn't have to do that. Fortunately, we found them in the cave down below, which was very, very awesome. Uh, where do these V crystals go? I guess we'll stick them in here. Okay. Oh yeah, I did get a wither skeleton skull as well off a uh, wither skeleton as I was kind of exploring around a second nether fortress. Um, so we have the ender pouch. It might even be a good idea to make the ender chest to go along with that. So if we do die and we lose our ender pouch, we can still access the items from the ender chest here in the base. But that does require an ender chest, which requires an eye of ender and another pearl. So we don't actually have enough stuff to do that since we only have one ender pearl. So I guess we're just going to hold off on that. Uh, okay, so ender pouch made. That definitely makes me feel a lot better going to places like the nether or any place where I feel like we could potentially die. Yeah, very good. I just ate one more of these uh, plowman lunches here, these guys. And yeah, I guess our nutrition went up above 90% on everything. So we gained some additional hearts, right? And we have resistance too, which is pretty good. So yeah, we have maximum amount of hearts. I don't think you're going to get anything else by having these all the way up to 100. But every time we eat this food, it gives us a 5.4% to all of the different stats. So next time we eat, it should put everything at 100%. But again, I don't think you get anything or being at 100, it's just over 90% on everything. Uh, so what I wanted to do now is to upgrade our tool station. Yes, if we upgrade our tool station to a tool forge, we can start making uh, tools that are better. So that is definitely a thing that I'd like to do. I would like to get ourselves an excavator and a hammer so when we clear out stuff for the base, it'll go that much faster. Now, I believe you can use pretty much any type of blocks you want, but really we are going to need uh, four blocks of iron. I think we have enough here for that. Yeah, so that leaves us with seven additional iron ingots. It's not very good. Uh, let's grab this thing, and let's take a look at the tool forge recipe. So this says we need blocks of steel leaf. I think that's incorrect. I think you can use any type of block here. This recipe just shows that in particular. The tool forge can be crafted with any four metal blocks. Yeah. Okay. So even though it says steel leaf, you don't have to go to the twilight forest for that. So we need three seared bricks. Do we have those? We do. Perfect. And then the tool station itself. So now that we have that, we should be able... No, this won't automatically click them in there, but I think you can place them. Hopefully that works anyway. 
Oh yeah, so there it is. Uh, there's a tool station, awesome. So we have an upgraded version of our tool forge. I'm sorry, there's a tool forge. We have an upgraded version of a tool station. Uh, so this will allow us to do like range attack, the shurikens if we wanted to do that. It will allow us to do lumber axes where we can chop down a tree with breaking one block. We already can do that since we have Bane Miner. But yeah, the hammer and the shovel, these are like the parts, these are the things that we really want. So in order really to make any of these things, we need to get a stencil going. So there's the hammer head. We're gonna need the excavator head. We definitely, we definitely need the tough tool rod and of course the tough binding. I think those are the majority. Oh, you know what? There's also the plate one, isn't there? Large plate pattern. So I think those are the majority of all the parts you need for making the upgraded uh, tools here. So part crafter, let's grab some cobblestone and we will do the hammer head. Now we could forge us out of something else, but I just like using stone for this kind of material, for this kind of a tool until we get a lot of other materials. Just because as we're mining stone, we're getting stone and you can just use that to repair it, right? Uh, so there's the stone head. As far as everything else, I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but as we've seen before, we can replace parts. It doesn't really cost anything. So we can make things out of wood, for instance, like the, uh, the tool rod if we wanted to, and then we can uh, replace that later with something better. Let's do the excavator head. We probably want that out of cobblestone as well. All right, so excavator heads, we have both of those. Now, I don't remember what all the parts are, so we need two plates for the hammer, one plate and a binding for the excavator. Okay, I don't know what we're gonna make all this stuff out of. I don't know. I kinda just wanted to get it going and then we can uh, make it better later. Yeah, so it's gonna be, these tools are gonna be really garbage tier at this point, but we will get them working. I think we need one more plate for the excavator. Okay, so let's do the hammer. We'll, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I tried double clicking those in there and like the game froze. I thought I had locked it up. All right, so there is a stone hammer, very, very garbage tier. And here is a stone excavator, again, garbage tier. We only have 230 durability on it. Yeah, that's not good at all. Uh, we definitely want uh, more modifiers on there. We want to get better parts. But for right now, this is going to get us by. And that's all that I really care about at this point in time. Uh, so, yeah. I will be able to start digging out some of the area here. Like I said, I want to push this back a little bit and kind of dig into the mountain. And we're going to wrap around. And I don't know if we're going to go beyond, like, where the, the ground is over here or how we're going to do this. This will be something that I figure out. But we definitely need more space. Yeah. We're going to be making a whole bunch of machines going forward. If we look at the quest book and we look at, well, I guess we can pretty much go in order. Like industrial craft is a thing that we're going to have to do. And there is a lot of stuff with industrial craft. Uh, I don't know if it's going to have us do all of this before we move on or whatever. But there is a lot of machines and a lot of setup. Like especially if we're going to be doing nuclear reactors and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so if we look at gates... Uh, where is IC2? So IC2 is right here. We need IC2 in order to unlock industrial foregoing, pipes, and nuclear craft. So yeah, these are definitely things that we have to do. Again, I don't know what's all required per each one of these sections, if we have to do everything, or if it's just optional to do some of the things. But yeah, we definitely need all that space. So that's something I'm gonna be working on off camera going forward. But definitely having the... Um, the hammer, if nothing else, will allow us to mine the, our different levels here in the branch mine that much easier and do a three by three area instead of just the one by one. Expose a lot more block per mine or per mining operation. Yeah, and just be able to get through resources a lot quicker. And I think that's going to be really good overall. But anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. We finally got ourselves an ender pouch. We can put away our more expensive items. We got ourselves a tool forge so we can get ourselves way better tools. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.